Hi Grade 12, let's continue with chemical equilibrium and today we're going over the factors that affect equilibrium. So first of all, yesterday I said that when the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction, we reach something called chemical dynamic equilibrium. So the rate of the forward reaction and the reverse reaction is equal. And we've reached a graph that looks like this. Okay, equal rates. Now, I did mention yesterday briefly that something can disturb that equilibrium. In other words, it's all perfect, they've reached equilibrium, they're happy, and then we do something, as scientists or industry or whatever, to disturb that equilibrium. And I said you must remember TCP. The catalyst is also coming here, but we will discuss that later. I want to focus on temperature, concentration, and pressure. And in this short video, I'm going to do concentration. So I'm going to break it up into separate videos for each of the different um, factors. But first, before we even go on to concentration, we have to understand some principles. We need to understand Le Chatelier's principle. Now, what Le Chatelier said is he said that any change in any of the factors that determine an equilibrium condition of a system, if we change this, it'll cause the system to change in such a manner as to reduce or counteract the effect of the change. Okay, that sounds complicated. Basically what he's saying is we have a system, it's reached equilibrium. Now we change something. We either change temperature, concentration, or pressure, TCP. When we change this, the system is, think of it as this, the system is unhappy. And the system wants to counteract this change. In other words, they want to go against this change. They want to get rid of the change. And so they, they, the system will change in such a way as to reduce or counteract the effect of a change. If I have to put it in silly terms, let's pretend that during quarantine I get very sad and I eat a lot. Like I eat a lot of chocolates and I eat a lot of chips. And for those of you that know me, you know that I like to do that and I like to eat. And then I put on weight. And now, let's pretend my system is unhappy. What do we do? We need to counteract that effect of the change. So we need to get rid of the weight. So I will exercise more and my metabolism will be faster. Obviously not, that doesn't just happen. But anyway, you know what I mean. Or um, I go outside and it's incredibly hot. It's a hot day. It's like 35 degrees. And I get so, so hot. And now my system is upset because I was in equilibrium and I was fine. Now I've increased the temperature. What do we do if we increase the temperature and we want to get back to a state of equilibrium? What do we do? We decrease the temperature. So I jump in the pool or I go take a shower, a cold shower. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. Now what we're going to do today is concentration. And I'm going to use this reaction. To illustrate this. So I hope you remember this reaction. We did this in fertilizers and can you remember which process? The Haber process. Do you remember? Reacting nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas to produce ammonia. Yeah, and it's a reversible reaction. So we'll see a lot of these reactions from fertilizers pop back up again because a lot of them are reversible so it's nice to use. Okay. So let's chat about what happens if I change the concentration. So I have this all summarized in this document, which I will attach to the lesson. I'll come back to the summary page. But what I'm doing is I'm discussing the change in concentration of the reactant. Okay, so this is what's going to happen. Let's say I add more nitrogen gas. Let's start there. So if I increase the concentration of nitrogen gas, okay, so I'm going to write this one out, just so you can see what I'm doing. So I increase, I'm going to write it in shorthand, I increase the concentration of nitrogen. Okay, remember the square brackets means concentration. I increase the concentration of nitrogen. So first of all, the system is in equilibrium. Then, I, I, I increase the concentration of nitrogen. What this does is, it disturbs or disrupts, equilibrium. 
In other words, we were happy, we were in equilibrium, we were all good, and then I added in more nitrogen, which disrupted the equilibrium. Now, according to Le Chatelier's principle, the reaction which will restore equilibrium will be favoured. Let me write that for you. So to repeat, according to Le Chatelier's principle, the reaction which will restore the equilibrium will be favoured. So we increase the concentration of nitrogen. So what will get rid of that nitrogen? We need to use it up. We need to use up the excess nitrogen. So that's what we need to do. We need to use up the excess or the extra nitrogen. And how do we do that? We need to increase the rate of the forward reaction. Now, grade 12, this is where um, my grade 12 from last year struggled a little bit. You need to understand, if I'm making more of this, if I add more of this into the reaction vessel, the system is going to be unhappy and equilibrium is going to be disrupted and we need to restore equilibrium. So we need to favor the reaction that restores equilibrium. So we're either going to favor the forward reaction or we're going to favor the reverse reaction. Now, if we favor the reverse reaction, what that means is that this ammonia is going to make even more of nitrogen. We don't want that. We want to use up the nitrogen. So we need to favor the reaction that gets rid of that extra nitrogen, which will be the forward reaction. Why is it the forward reaction? Because if we favor the forward reaction, these reactants will get used up, right? So we need to favor the forward reaction. We can say forward reaction is favored and we can also say equilibrium shifts to the right so we're favoring the forward reaction so this one which means equilibrium shifts to the right right is that way okay and if that happens the concentration of these two will decrease because the reaction is going this way. So we get of this. So concentration of N2 and the concentration of H2 will decrease. And the concentration of NH3 will increase. Okay. So a brief recap, the system was in a happy state of equilibrium, dynamic chemical equilibrium, forward reaction and reverse reaction were equal. Then we added in more nitrogen gas. Then the system said, okay, you just disrupted my equilibrium. And according to that guy, Le Chatelier, I need to favor the reaction that will restore equilibrium. So how am I going to restore equilibrium? I need to use up this extra stuff you just put in. How do I do that? I need to favor this reaction, the forward reaction. So equilibrium will shift to the right, and that means that the concentration of nitrogen and hydrogen will decrease because we're, going, we're doing this reaction, which gets rid of this, and the concentration of ammonia will increase. Okay, so please take this example down. And we'll discuss a few more. Oops, sorry. We'll discuss a few more, but they are in the notes. Okay, so I'm not going to write down everything. We're just going to discuss it. Okay, so pause the screen and take it down. What happens... Let's go to another scenario now. What happens if I decrease the concentration of hydrogen gas, for example? So now I'm decreasing this guy over here. So I'm taking some of it out, which we can do. So don't ask how are you going to do that. We can remove some of the gas from the reaction vessel. So if we decrease hydrogen, if you want to, you guys can write down this as a second example. If you want to write as I'm speaking. So that's my first example. The second thing I'm discussing is if I decrease the concentration of hydrogen gas, we're going to disrupt the equilibrium. According to Le Chatelier, we need to favor the reaction that will restore the equilibrium. So we've taken away hydrogen. How are we going to fix that? We need to make more hydrogen. In other words, more hydrogen must be produced. 
which reaction will favor more hydrogen being produced? The reverse reaction, the reaction going this way. Because remember, if we're going this way, we're making these. So the reverse reaction will be favored. So equilibrium will shift to the left. Left is that way, left. And therefore, the concentration of H2 and N2 will increase because we're favoring this reaction. And the concentration of ammonia will decrease. I hope that made sense. If it didn't, rewind me, take it down as I'm saying it, and think about it. Okay, let's do another one. What happens if I decrease the concentration of this ammonia over here? So basically, I'm removing it as it's getting produced. I'm decreasing this concentration. Okay, so we decrease the concentration of ammonia. We disrupt the equilibrium. According to Le Chatelier's principle, the reaction which will restore the equilibrium, in other words, fix the situation, will be favored. So we need to favor the reaction that will produce more of this. Which reaction produces more of this? The forward reaction. Therefore, the forward reaction is favored. Equilibrium shifts to the right. So the concentration of ammonia will increase, which is our goal. We want to increase this. And because this one increases and the reaction is going this way, the concentration of nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas will decrease. Okay, so when it comes to concentration, I can increase one or decrease one, and it'll have an effect on the forward reaction or the reverse reaction, which one will be faster. Later on, we're going to do graphs. I don't want to load you with too much information now. So for now, we're sticking to the explanation of Le Chatelier's principle. And later on, we're going to be doing graphs. Let's do one more. Okay, so I'm going to flash this one up here. This is also in the notes. So there is a reversible reaction. Carbon dioxide plus hydrogen gives you that reversible reaction. Let's zoom in. Can you see? hope so. Gives us water in gaseous form and carbon monoxide, gaseous form. Okay, it says here, what happens if we increase the concentration of CO2? So, I'm going to block the answer. You guys think about it quickly. Pause it if you need to. Think about what happens if we increase the concentration of CO2. In other words, this one. Okay, so according, if we increase the concentration of CO2, that means that we've disturbed or disrupted equilibrium. So according to La Chatelier's principle, the system will respond to counteract the effect of the disturbance, or it will counteract, um, it'll increase the rate of the reaction that will oppose the disturbance. You can say it however you want. As a result, so we've increased this. The system wants to fix it. As a result, we need to get rid of some of the CO2 that was added. We need to use up some of the CO2 that was added. Therefore, the forward reaction needs to be favored. Equilibrium will shift to the right. Therefore, the concentration of carbon dioxide and hydrogen will decrease, and the concentration of water in its gaseous form and carbon monoxide will increase. I hope that makes sense. Let's just read. Yeah. Okay. What happens if we decrease the concentration of H2? That's what we asked in the second question. So if I decrease this concentration, what happens? So we've disrupted equilibrium, and according to Le Chatelier's principle, the system will respond to counteract this change. So we've decreased this concentration, so we are going to need to produce more hydrogen. The reaction that will produce more hydrogen is the reverse reaction, so equilibrium will shift to the left. Therefore, the concentration of carbon dioxide gas and hydrogen gas will increase. And the concentration of water and carbon monoxide will decrease. Let's just read when I wrote an answer. According to, to Le Chatelier's principle, the system will respond to contact the effect of the change. As a result, the system will replace some of the H2 that has been removed. So more hydrogen will be produced because some of it was removed or taken away. The reverse reaction will be favored as this reaction will produce more hydrogen. As a result, the concentration of the H2 and the CO2 will increase and the concentration of the H2 and the CO will decrease. Equilibrium shifts 
to the left. Okay, I hope this makes sense to you, grade 12. It is very important. So if it doesn't, you're going to have to go back and rewatch. Remember, you can't give up on science. And I know you hate, hate, hate lectures from me. But, um, yeah, I'm just trying to help you. Okay, so if you're not understanding, that's okay. This is a new section. You just need to go back and listen again. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next video where we'll go over temperature.